Hey, Wamboos. Uh, so we're going into actinolite. Now, actinolite is a mineral, but it's not classed as a gemstone. So we're starting a whole new playlist here. There's going to be a, a separate playlist for the gemological aspects of rocks, and there's going to be another playlist for the mineralogical playlist of rocks. And some things will fall into both. Things like alabaster, possibly amazonite, that can be classed as a mineral and as a gemstone. So they might get two videos looking at it from two different aspects. But... Um, uh, what we're going to be doing today is just actinolite and here to tell us all about actinolite is the artificially intelligent version of me and take it away guy. Actinolite is a non-precious variety of nephrite from which a form of jade can be derived. Actinolite specimens make fine additions to any mineral collection. Actinolite is a member of the silicate group of minerals. It is a silicate of the metallic elements calcium, magnesium and iron. Crystals of actinolite tend to be long and blade-shaped, and in many cases the crystal shapes run into one another in a process known as twinning. Actinolite also occurs in thin sheets called lamellae, and in columns, and also in radiating formations that resemble spokes on the wheel of a bicycle. It also forms in great lumps or masses, in fibers, or in grains. Actinolite is moderately hard, and scores 5 to 6 on the Mohs scale. It scratches appetite, but is itself scratched by feldspar. Actinolite is a fairly heavy mineral and weighs about three times as much as the equivalent volume of water. When actinolite is struck with a sharp instrument or exposed to similar forms of pressure, it breaks off cleanly along its structural lines. This is known as showing perfect cleavage. In common with other amphibolies, but unlike most other minerals, this cleavage may run along two different lines. Actinolite may be transparent or nearly opaque, and it has a glassy sheen or vitreous luster. When actinolite is scraped along an unvarnished piece of white porcelain, it will always show a white streak. Actinolite is mainly green in color, but some samples can be a blackish green or even plain black. Although actinolite has the same chemical makeup as precious nephrite, the internal structure of actinolite is notably less compact than that of the gem variety. It is therefore of no use in jewelry and ornamentation, because it would be too easily damaged by everyday use. Still, actinolite can be quite beautiful in itself, and it has many properties that are of great interest to collectors. Not least of these is the ability of some specimens to show different colors depending on the angle from which they are viewed. Right, so as I said earlier, this is a new playlist just about minerals, and if you're enjoying what we're doing so far, just rock the like button, that'd be most awesome. And the best way to support the channel, of course, is to buy a rock. Links in the descriptions. I've got three websites, uh, three wholesale websites and one uh, retail website. So check out the links in the description. Thanks, guys. Carry on, artificially intelligent, Jim. Actinolite is a member of the Amphiboli group of minerals. Amphibolies are silicates which usually contain the constituents of water, in other words, hydrogen and oxygen even though they do not have water itself within their structure or attached to it. Such chemical compounds are said to be hydrons. Amphibolies are extremely complicated chemically because they undergo extensive atomic substitution, that is although they all contain the same elements, the proportion of each element may vary significantly from specimen to specimen. Amphibolies are widely distributed throughout the world in rocks that were originally formed by volcanic activity, also called igneous rocks, and in rocks that were altered by heat and pressure in earlier geological ages, also called metamorphic rocks. One of the most distinctive characteristics of amphibolies is that when they are hit with a sharp instrument they break off not in one line of cleavage, but in two, and these lines intersect at an angle of 120 degrees. Among the more common and widely distributed members of the amphiboly group are the minerals anthophyllite, arfedsonite, cummingtonite, glucophane, grunerite, hornblende, and rebeckite. As the finer examples of actinolite become more and more compact and start to merge with gem quality nephrite, it becomes possible to fashion them for ornamentation. Such samples will not be hard enough to turn into jewelry or ornaments but they may be good enough to form part of mineral collections where they will be kept in display cases and not subjected to excessive wear and tear. Actinolite is a pleochroic mineral. That is one which can show different colors depending on the angle that it is viewed from. This pleochroism increases with the iron content of the specimen. Actinolite forms in thin layers of rocks that originally formed through volcanic activity. These rocks were then altered by heat and pressure, 
so they are described as metamorphic. Actinolite is found in many parts of the world in dolomites and magnesian limestone formations. Some of the best deposits are in British Columbia in Canada, in the Alpine regions of Italy, in New Zealand, in Siberia in Russia, and in Alaska and California in the USA. The Alaskan deposits are found close to significant quantities of nephrite, the gem variety of actinolite, that provides a form of jade. Another variety of actinolite called bisolite is found mainly in Pennsylvania and Virginia in the USA. Right, so that's actinolite. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be carrying on. We're going to be doing adamite, which is a completely different mineral. So we're going on with the minerals a bit before we jump back into the gems. And if you don't want to miss anything, uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe, because we're going to be doing a lot more videos. Thanks, guys. See you in the next one.